This is a crown jewel. There's many examples of blast furnaces online, but I just wanted something simple and I couldn't find it. So this is my simple example of how a blast furnace works, AKA making iron. Now for a little history on the iron furnace. Cast iron had been originally found in China dating all the way back to the 5th century BC, but the earliest blast furnaces in China date to the 1st century AD, and then in the West from the High Middle Ages. The successful substitution of coke for charcoal is widely attributed to English inventor Abraham Darby in 1709. The efficiency of the process was further enhanced by the practice of preheating combustion air, aka hot blast, patented by Scottish inventor James Beaumont Nielsen in 1828. Now, what is needed to make iron? Well, first you need coal, or the alternative which burns hotter and is more efficient, and that's coke which also can be made from coal. In addition to this, you're going to need limestone. Limestone is used to remove the impurities and eventually produce the slag that sits above the iron. Now, what's most important? You need the iron ore. In this example, we have the Mill Creek Furnace and what it may have looked like in the 19th century. It was one of three furnaces built in the Youngstown area by the Eaton brothers, the other furnaces being Hopewell and Maria. The start of operation was 1835, blowout 1855 you could see the daily tonnage was about three to four tons the stack was about 30 feet with a nine foot bosch its blast was cold originally burned charcoal but then later converted to coal now here's some blast furnaces you may have seen in the 18th century if you're hanging out then notice on the picture on the right that there was a water wheel that was probably used to force air into the blast furnace you can see on the picture on the left how the iron is in the straight lines coming out the one side and on the other side the the slag and other impurities here we enter the 19th century where steel production becomes a massive business that literally builds the united states this is closer to what my ancestors worked in in youngstown ohio one of my relatives had said that it was so hot when he started working at Sheet and Tube that his shoelaces burned off on his first day. We're finally here. Let's make some iron. So, we're going to go back to our original example of the Mill Creek Furnace and open it up. On the inside, you're going to find the furnace is loaded up with a sweltering 2,000 plus degrees of heat. We're going to throw our coal, iron ore, and limestone in at the top. And on its way cooking, it's going to seep down right into where the cold air is being blasted in, and then it's gonna eventually hit into the slag layer, which is gonna go out one side. Then, on the other layer, underneath it, we're gonna have the iron, which comes out on the other end. And that's it. That's basically how it works. All of these ingredients cook together in such high temperatures that it eventually leaves you with iron. It's an absolutely remarkable invention, and it really makes me wonder who found this to begin with. Was someone making their version of a sandcastle and decided to throw some rocks in the center and burn it? I don't know. Really makes you wonder. On behalf of everyone at the Kingdom of Sir Storia, we want to thank you for inventing the blast furnace.